So now that we know how to compare with loose equality, let's look at how we can do it with this triple equals strict equality operator. And the difference with this is that neither value is converted before it's compared. So the types have to be the same. So let's have a look here. So we have an expected value here, which is our goal. Then we have the actual value, which is the value we're testing. And this can be returned by a function or something. It doesn't have to be declared explicitly here. And we have this comparison Boolean that checks if this actual value is equal to this expected value. And then it'll log that. So let's have a look. So if we run this now, we can see that it's false. Because 1 and 2, despite the fact that they're the same type, the numerical value of them is different. So this strict equal method um, will run this equals 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 operator. And if that returns true, the test will pass. Otherwise, the test will fail. So it, once again, it takes in three arguments. So the first argument is the actual value. So we can just give it the actual here. The second is the expected value. So that's what we're testing against. So that's expected. And finally, we have an error message. And we can say something like actual was not equal to expected. So the error message is once again printed if this fails. So if we run this test now, we can see that um, the um, the comparison here has failed um, because it's returned false. And we have um, and this error message shown right here. And it says expected 2 to equal 1. OK, so um, let's try changing this um, ex actual value to 2 as a string. So if we run this now, we can see that it still fails because unlike equals equals, this two um, in a string does not get converted into a number. So because they're of different types, they can't be equal. So this Boolean will return false and therefore this test will fail. Um, if they are the same type though, when we're comparing numbers, um, they actually it actually compares the numerical value of the number not the actual number itself. So if I were to put something here like 0 plus 1, so that, that the math will be done first in, on any number and this will be um, turned into 1 here. And if we run this now, we can see that the comparison is true and this test passes. Um, if we have just 1 here, um, we can see that it'll still pass. Um, also, and again, if you, if you want to demonstrate the um, the numerical thing. If we put 0 here and minus 0, minus 0 and 0, although they're different numbers, they have the same numerical value. So if we run this, we can see that it's true. Um, let's try with objects. So I'll once again do the same object. So name Bob like this. And I'll just copy that object. So both of these ha are assigned to objects that have the same value. But they're actually two separate objects that are clones of each other in different memory addresses. So if we run this, we can see that this fails. So this only checks if the two variables are pointing to the same object, not that their objects have the same um, data inside them. If I let this expected point to the actual here, and then we um, restart the test, um, we can see, hang on. Once, one second. Oh, sorry, my bad. Um, this is supposed to be the other way around. So we want the actual to point to the expected here. If we run this, we can see that this comparison returns true because this expect. So what it does is that this it looks at this actual and it points to this expected. And then this expected will point to this um, name equals Bob. And so the actual and expected are technically pointing to the same object. So when we run the a strict equality comparator, it returns true. So the opposite of strict equal is this um, other method, and it's called um, not strict equal. And it basically, like I said, does the opposite. So it will once again take in um, an actual and expected. And the error message this time was, will be something like the actual was equal to expected, although actual was not not equal to the expected. And this um, method will pass if this boolean returns false here. So if we run this now, um, we can see that the boolean here has returned true because these are pointing to the same thing. And because it didn't return false, this test has failed. Um, let's change this now. So if we 
and put them as um, two objects with identical data, for example, and we run this, um, we can see that this will return false, therefore this test will pass. Um, if we put this uh, if we put this as, has a string that says um, 10, so this is the string that we're trying to equal, and then we make this into a number, and we run this, um, be um, because equals equals doesn't do type conversion, this will return false, and then this method will once again pass. So they're the two methods that we can use um, to check if two values are equal using the strict equality. So let's take a look at the challenge now, and again, it's in... Um, unit test.js and assert and try have been declared for us here. So we're down here now. And once again, our goal is to make all four of these tests pass. So we'll have some, an expected and actual input, and we want to give it to either the strict equal test or the not strict equal test to ensure we get a pass. So the first one we have is um, the actual value we have is six and we're trying to make it equal to this we're trying to check if it's equal to the string of six and we know that if we use a triple equals operator this will return false because the type conversion doesn't happen and this number is not equal to the string so we know that the triple equals will return false therefore if we want to pass we want to give it to the not strict equal method um this one what it does is it checks if this um, 6 right here is equal to our expected value of 3 times 2. But like I said, the math always happens first, and we actually just compare the numerical values rather than the numbers themselves. So this 3 times 2 will get evaluated into a 6, and then this 6 equals 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 6 will return true. So if we want to give, make this test pass, we have to give it to the um, strict equal method, which will pass when the Boolean expression is true. Um, the next one, we have we have an expected um, what result of 12. So this is what we're comparing against. And here we have six times and then this string of two. So what happens here is that because we're doing a math here, this um, string of two gets automatically converted into a number. Um, this isn't to do with the equal, this isn't when the equals happen. This is just when the math happens. And when the math happens, the conversion type conversion still happens. We're not comparing anything right now. So this will get converted into a number and this six times two will get evaluated into the number 12. And then we'll do the equals equals equals. And because this is a number now, this 12 will equal 12. So this Boolean will return true. So in order to get a pass, we wanna give it to the strict equal method. Um, the final one we have is this we have these two arrays here, and these arrays contain a number, a string, and an empty object, and a number, a string, and an empty object. And the two arrays contain exactly the same data, but they're not the same array, because this array and this array are two separate things in memory. So if we run equals 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 with that, actually I might be wrong here, but we'll see. If we run equals 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 with two arrays that are not, they're not pointing to the same part of memory, they're just two things that are clones of each other. So this will return false, so we want to give it to the not strict equal if we want to ensure the test passes. Um, let's save that and try it. Again, like I said, I'm, oops, I'm not too sure about this, so we'll have to see what happens. So if I run the test now, um, Okay, it has timed out. So some of these tests require trying it several times as we found out in the last video. Um, I'm just gonna double check the solution as well just to make sure I have it correct. Okay, yeah, there we go. So it's passed. So all it did was it took some time to do it. I think Glitch is being slow at saving projects right now. But um, this is these are the correct solutions for this. So you can go ahead and submit that and it should pass eventually.